Peter from Goose. I'm here with Ryan Storm from Storm Sound, and we're doing a rig rundown, uh, starting with guitars. Um, so this is my guitar. This is one of my guitars, I guess. Uh, it's a Sir, um, which is a great uh, brand, uh, made by this guy, John Sir, who used to work for Fender, making custom shop guitars. Um, he split off to do his own thing. And I'm glad that he did, because he's doing a great job. Um, and they're pretty much incredible Strat style guitars. They are very solid. They play great, necks feel good. They all have kind of like a satin finish on the neck, um, instead of like a really glossy, sticky finish, which I like a lot. They all run like, um, like a pretty modern, like nine and a half radius, I think. Um, so it's like a pretty flat, generally flat fretboard. Um, and then I think it's a nine and a half to 12. Um, but anyway, this is one that I got recently. I had it custom made, which I've never done before. So I had a custom made guitar. Um, I got it like, you know, I forget which red it was called, like Fiesta Red or something. Cause I always, actually my first guitar was a red guitar, a red Strat. Um, so it was kind of like homage to that. Like it was, that one was probably like a, they called it a Starcaster cause it came with a little five watt amp and I, it was like under the Christmas tree. So like that was pretty special. Um, so kind of wanted to go back to the roots. Um, and I had him do like this, you know, nice flame neck, roasted neck, which is like super cool. And the body's roasted alder and, um, the main difference between this and my other guitar, uh, which we'll get to, which is the Mateus Asato signature model, which is the first Sura that I got. Uh, the main difference is just the pickups. Um, I had them put in these like, these are like more vintage 63 single coils up top, uh, but it's the same humbucker. Although I think this one sounds like better to my ear. It sounds more gnarly um, than the Mateus, but even though they're the same, I still feel like they're different. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just been a joy to play this guitar. It's also a little lighter, which I like, um, you know, cause it, there's wear and tear, <laughs> but, uh, but it's great. how these uh these single coils like these two and four positions uh with like these more vintage style single coils it just sounds so buttery smooth to me um i think the mateus sato model is a little bit more modern um and but these are they sound like a classic fender so um i love this guitar i love the bridge it stays in tune it's super fun. Um, moving on down to the pedals. Um, there's definitely a few of them. I try and hack as many as I can into the pedal board space. And my rule is that I just won't upgrade my size of the pedal board because then it'll just get too insane for me. <laughs> so like I've limited myself to this board. Um, and like literally I've probably used every potential space. <laughs> um, but like a lot of these things change, like I'm notorious for like, you know, wanting to change the pedal board, like between tours or anything like that. So you'll never probably see the board like the same twice, like on consecutive tours. Um, but a few things will stay the same. Like I have a tuner pedal, um, great. You can tune all the strings at once. I do use that feature because <laughs> it is super handy when I just have to pick up the guitar, like, in an instant, like where we just put, like played a song on keys and I'm just like, oh shit, here we go. Is it in tune? I can see, <laughs> you know, all at the same time while the tuner's on, like it tells me if each string is in tune. Great tuner pedal. Uh, goes into the wah. Um, actually, wait. It actually, the uh, next thing is this new guy, which is the octave divider, which is like a, a Behringer is, made it it's like a new it's like a clone of like this old pedal that mutron made um which is like kind of a historic pedal it costs like 
over a thousand dollars but it's essentially like an octave down but it also adds in like a ring modulator so it kind of sounds badass <laughs> I just thought it was like super musical when I first tried it because I was like looking at other octave options because I didn't really use my whammy all that much um, like Rick uses it all the time so I was like I don't need to be redundant and like also use whammy all the time so I was like let me try and like see what's out there I tried out some other like random octave pedals and it was like these aren't super inspiring to me and I was like this will probably be really sick if we're like making doing like some like really like evil goose jams that people love uh, like it's just like this is just like the regular drive and then with this guy I don't know it just sounds it's got the octave thing but the ring modulator effect is really sweet you know this is just the octave and then you put the ring modulator on just, I don't know it adds something nice it's it's got a lot of character so um, it's kind of big but no big deal I know Mutron also made one that was a little smaller, but the Behringer one was like 100 bucks, and I was like, this sounds great to me. I don't need to fuss. I think it's great. So, um, got that. I love it. Uh, then it goes into this Moger Foger pedal, which is, you know, kind of a uh, classic. One of the first pedals I ever got. I got it at like a Sam Ash Music in New York when I was in college, um, go to NYU. And it is uh, just a classic envelope filter. And then it does, you know, the thing where it self oscillates. So cool. Never seen anything else that does that in a pedal. Moog is the best company ever. Uh, for making that and like they stopped making these pedals so I feel lucky to have it and it's like super fun to play around with that if like we're getting like spacey or whatever it's kind of cool to make that sound from your guitar it would normally be like a synth thing but like it responds really well to your playing and like yeah you just have to turn that resonance knob just a little bit and uh you get some magic um then we go to the wah which is like you know i guess i don't use it that much but it's nice to have it it's, it's cool for like textures, for playing rhythm in a jam. You can just kind of like... I use it more for like a filter than like a, like a classic like funky wad thing. Um, that goes into it's TS9, Analog Man, Mod, um, had this forever. really lucky that I found this drive combination of the TS9 and the King of Tone, which I'll credit to Rob Compa, Dopapod. Um, he was the, f I was like in love with Dopapod when I was in college. And that was kind of when I was like on my pedal journey for the first time really. And uh, he used this combination and I was like, his tone, I mean, I always loved his tone so much. So I was like obsessed and I was like, okay, I gotta get the King of Tone. Uh, and I gotta get the modded TS9, which Trey is famous for using as well. I was like, this sounds like the combination. So I got that and I was just like, I'm not looking back. This is the best thing ever. And I've never used another 
combination of drives ever since. So that's probably like almost 10 years ago. Um, love it. I honestly keep this like yellow channel on the King of Tone on all the time. Adds a nice, nice growl to the tone, like makes it a little darker. Uh, the red channel goes on like for the crazy shit. like that's when you get on the red channel <laughs> but yeah that one usually doesn't go on without green also being on so I go like yellow green red you know uh, shit gets wild um, that then goes into a compressor which is on most of the time the Keeley compressor it's very subtle but it helps with the drives because like it kind of tames them a little bit out the volume makes it easier for front of house and I just like the tone of the compressor for like like funky lines something like that whatever <laughs> um, phaser after that I used to use the small stone phaser and uh, it was great uh, kept breaking him <laughs> So <laughs> I had to switch to this guy and I'm actually really glad that I did because I think it's a lot better. I think this is the best phaser pedal I've ever used and it has two different channels. Um, so the, the left channel I kind of leave on for regular. Like slow phase. Both of my, I don't really like fast phase on guitar that much, but this is like, like more background rhythm stuff. Um, other guy I kind of use for that classic like Tame Impala thing um, that I used to use my small stone for because like that pedal it is great because you have like the colored switch on it where you can make it from like basically from that left channel to this right channel so like I've set it up exactly mimicking small stone pretty much. You know, I love that shit. I think it's great for jams, for like, if we're really out there right before like a drop back into like, you know, the glorious one. Um, it is like, I don't know. It's just like the right thing to put on because it just does that nice ramp up and then you kick it off right at the like, you know, volume's down. <laughs> you just kick it off right at the, at the big, like whatever, the big one and it's, it's great. I used to use the small stone for that all the time. Um, and then you could do both at once because like, why not? Just get all kinds of weird, weird out of phase. Um, great pedal. I actually have a second one for my vintage vibe because uh, I like it so much. Um, so it could be stereo, so that's why it's good for this. Uh, next is the mood, which uh, in the jam last night of Echo, uh, I was on like piano, and then like I wasn't wearing my guitar; it was just sitting over here. And I turned off my tuner pedal, and I kicked on the mood, and I just started like kind of like, <laughs> and like instant, instant weird noise, you know. I was just tapping, like, that's the great thing about this pedal, um, it's so in-depth, and I use, like, one feature of it most of the time, which is kind of like, also like the drip fields, like, intro. Um, I had, like, left it off the board for a while, but then just put it back on for like just that little extra weirdness when you need it. And I'm so glad that I did. Uh, thanks Chase Bliss for making weird stuff. <laughs> um, all right, so then it goes to the Strymon Timeline, which I've kind of like, I've been, it's been off and on with this guy. Switching back with the uh, like 
this is the other thing I use. It's a uh, TC Electronics like flashback, um, which I do like because you can do continuous tapping and it won't like mess up. Like sometimes with this pedal, I do love it. It will like, let's see. Like sometimes it fucks up when you're tapping. So it's better to like set the, better to set the tap like at the beginning and like hopefully not have to adjust it. Um, because that was the only thing about the TC that it, it just like works so well so you can continuously tap and it won't mess up. Um, this won't do that, so, you know. But it, this, it does have its like other amazing effects that are like unique to it, like this smear, which is like a swell. functionality. Like a more normal reverse as opposed to the moods reverse. It's a great pedal. Um, even the regular just like normal delay uh, sounds good. Does some great things. It's got a ton of presets. Um, then I've got the Strymon Flint which is, I think my, it's definitely like one of the pedals I would not live without. That and the drives, I could go anywhere, pretty much do anything. Um, I love this. I've got it hooked up this Chase Bliss expression pedal, which is like a dream expression pedal for me. I love this rolly knob, because um, I just like how much reverb I have with it. from like zero to like a sh yeah and we kind of do and it just like goes right off so i used to just do it with my foot but living up there was kind of hard and a little weird to just like always use my foot to adjust the knob so i love this expression pedal i think it's great this thing also has like some good tremolo um i leave it on this like almost sounds like almost like a vibe effect because i leave the rate so low. Um. This just sounds so sweet. So smooth. Um, fantastic pedal. I I do love it. I, I, I leave like the reverb one on the 80s because you can do infinite uh, decay. And instead of like, you know, endless, uh, I guess, delay, like the, the notes don't like necessarily like, they, they kind of like hang out. It's more of like a general ambience. So it is nice to be able to like work the expression pedal just like a little bit. Uh, I do have to back that off a little bit for the show. <laughs> this is a good level. It's probably a lot right now. It's there, but then you can. Great job, Strymon. Um, all right, over here, amps. I have two now, just in case. Um, they're the same. Deluxe Reverbs, 
64 custom hand wired edition best edition thanks vendor um for doing that and it's just like i don't know they're really fucking smooth smooth fender deluxe reverb it's so much better than the other reissue models so i love this i also realized recently that the speaker i have in here was like they were different so like this is like one that i got later and it was like a factory issued speaker and this one i had bought second hand and i didn't realize at the time that somebody had changed the speaker and i went to the back and i was like oh wait this is a different speaker so like we come back here here i'll, I'll here you can come away i'll do a little flashlight for you um okay great so it's an alessandro ga sc 64 um had never heard of it there was a jensen in here or in the other one but what I did was I realized there was a difference because I actually took this other amp on the fall tour in October and I was just like, why do I not like this tone as much? Um, like something is wrong. Like it's the same amp. It's supposed to be the same. Cause like this one was like having some problems. Like it had a problem at Red Rocks or something. So I was like, I should probably just switch to the other one. This one's like done with the road. And then I realized the speaker was different. And I was like, crap, like I gotta get the other speaker and like I've been on tour with like this tone that I don't like as much for like three weeks and I was just like, I just didn't understand why. So um, got the other speaker, switched back to that one and now I couldn't be happier. Um, so speaker really does matter. I'm, I, was, I was shocked. Uh, so yeah, really reliable amps. Here's the other guitar, um, the Mateus model. It's got some really nice love on it now <laughs> for being on the road for like two years. Uh, it's such a solid guitar. I actually have the action on this a little higher. Um, we haven't, I guess we haven't played the, uh, <laughs> the original version of Born in a minute, but like, I guess if we were, I'd probably play it on this because of the, it's a lot easier to do the slide with the higher action. Um, but phenomenal guitar, love it. Um, oh, shout out to Original Fuzz Straps, my favorite strap company. Um, this isn't one because I wanted a little wider strap, but I think they're going to like start developing wider straps, hopefully. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Guitar World. Um, yes, question. The, the Firestorm amp that you used in the fall briefly. Yes. All right. So I used a Firestorm amp, which was custom made. Um, a dear friend had like contacted the guy who made it and he was like, can you build one for Peter? He did. It's, it's fire. I mean, it's so sick. Um, but it is not necessarily like good for my role in this band. Like if I was like a Derek trucks or something, <laughs> I'd probably be using that amp. You know, it would be like if I was playing lead all the time or, you know, just kind of like a more like lead guitar role or just like wanted heavy drive. Cause that's the thing about those amps. It's like, they're all about the tube drive. Like if you're not turning that thing up, like super loud, you're not really like getting the full tone of that amp. And you're really not even supposed to use pedals with those amps. So um, it was a really very nice gift. And I'm so excited that I have it. I play it through it at home. Um, and it's like, it's, it's a thrill for sure. Um, but yeah. I'm using the fenders on the road because it's just, it works better with my role in the band as like more of a rhythm guy. Um, but you know, I can still rip some leads every now and again too. Um, oh yeah, the other thing is that we're wireless um, on the guitar. You pretty much go anywhere uh, in the venue and uh, it'll like, it'll follow you around. <laughs> like, well, you know, the sound will still come out. So you can
Thank mm-hmm. you.